Stay tuned for an exclusive interview with Jake Allen, goalie for the Montreal Canadiens. Hey everyone, welcome back to St. Stephen High School in our second season of Spartan TV. Since the last show, a lot has changed with COVID and we're going to show you some of those changes. Then, Rebecca and Abigail are going to show us how to use our technology safely online. And Ian, Kate and Ian did sports where they get to interview a special guest. And finally, Tori and Emily are going to show us how we can shop locally. Even though our province is in green, we still have to wear masks and sanitize as much as possible. But because of that, we can have students back full time. We're now allowed to have international students at our school. And this year, we have 12. They come from Mexico, Germany, Spain, Japan, Latvia, and South Korea. There are many new courses coming to light this year, one of them being personal interest. It's where you get to decide what you want to learn and you make up a plan for yourself. Idea Center is another class, just like personal interest, but instead of having one period, you have two periods with broader subjects. Although there are a lot of new things this year, one thing that is staying with us is our technology. And now Rebecca and Abigail are going to show us how to stay safe while using our technology. Now that we've come back to school, just about everybody has been relying on the internet. Whether it's using it as a learning tool, connecting with friends, or even keeping up to date with the news. Since the internet is so well known and well used, you may be asking yourself if everything you view and use online is safe. Today, we're going to talk about how you can protect yourself online, how you can protect your friends and your family, and how being aware can change your experience with the internet entirely. Protecting yourself from hackers is a key element to staying safe on the internet. The definition of a hacker is somebody who uses computers to gain unauthorized access to data. The term is usually applied to those who use it for illegal actions, though there are hackers that retain this skill to solve various technical problems. Malicious hackers may try to steal login credentials, financial information, or other sensitive data. We can never completely avoid being hacked when we're online, but we can take some precautions to greatly decrease the chances of having our data stolen. Countless websites require you to make a password when creating an account. It is important to create a strong and unique password to avoid getting hacked. What comes to mind when you think of a strong password? Well, I think of a good mix of letters, numbers, and symbols. Oh, and the length is really important. The longer it is, the harder it is to guess. And when I say a mix of letters, that means capitals and lowercase. Many of us use very simple and easy to remember passwords. But it's important that our passwords vary, because if not, it would be very easy for a hacker to access all your accounts. Have you ever received an email from an unknown address that contains a link or other information that's not necessarily relevant to you? These are often scams, and they can be sent via email, text message, or social media. You may be asking yourself, what is an online scam? An internet scam is a form of fraud designed by a hacker, a cyber criminal, or a computer that's specially programmed to send those types of messages. One of the types of scams is called phishing, which leads you to believe that you are logging on to a website that you would normally use. It could be disguised as a bank, an online shopping website, or even a social media platform. Another type of common scam is an antivirus pop-up that requires you to click on some kind of link. And this link will usually install some kind of harmful program to your computer instead of a helpful one. How do I know if a message I've received is a scam? Well, a good step would be to check who the message is from. If you don't recognize them, it could be a scam. They could be trying to offer money, ask for money, or even trying to acquire sensitive information. Make sure the offer doesn't seem too good to be true. Most free prizes aren't legitimate. And finally, never under any circumstances should you share your password or any personal information with someone you don't know, trust, or have reason to share it with. Even if you do trust the person you're speaking with, always keep an eye out for suspicious activity. If hackers get a hold of accounts, they'll often use them to manipulate others. Just remain cautious and make sure to pay attention to the little details. And remember, it's probably easier to share personal information in person rather than through the internet in the long run. 
Now that we know a little more about staying safe online, think about what you can do to protect yourself, your friends, and your family online. Thank you, Abby and Rebecca, for keeping us informed about cybersecurity. Now that our school is back in session, that means that fall sports are back up and running again. We offer lots of great sports teams for students at St. Stephen High School to be a part of. So let's go talk to some of our student athletes who represent green and white pride on the field. I'm Ashlyn, I am in grade 11 this year, and I play second base and I pitch for the St. Stephen High School girls softball team. This year's been a little different, especially with COVID and everything, but it's 110% better than last year. We have a great bunch of girls, as I said, and it's just been an amazing atmosphere this year. Hey, my name's uh, Kyle Anderson, and I'm in grade 10, and I play for the St. Stephen High School baseball team. And I have an outfield position, and we're looking forward to winning more games. And one of the highlights we have of uh, some of the plays we had is getting really good catches uh, before the ball even hit the ground, and just striking people out as fast as we could. And hopefully we can keep that up for the rest of the season. Sports are looking a little different this year due to a lift in COVID protocols. Last year, ball players weren't allowed to sit in the dugouts, soccer players had to socially distance while sitting on the bench, and we couldn't even have a tackle football team. This year, all our favorite sports are back and our student athletes are so excited to be back on the field. My name's Alex Russell Samways and I am in grade 12. I am co-captain of the boys varsity soccer team. This season I'm looking forward to getting back on the pitch with less of the Covid rules so to say. I think we've got a good bunch of guys to make a good atmosphere and hopefully go out and win as many games as we can. I'm the captain of the varsity girls soccer team. I'm looking forward to playing games with my teammates and just having fun out on the soccer field. Well this year we're allowed to play different teams during the week and we're allowed to have however many people we want on the field while we're playing which is different from last year when we were only allowed 50 people in the field. Um, we have a really amazing team this year and I'm really excited to play with this really great group of girls and have a really fun time. I'm really grateful for the fact that we are actually able to play a pretty normal year this year, considering last year's sports were pretty not normal, and I'm glad that life is getting back to the way it was before. Playing sports is not only a great way to stay active, but it can also be helpful for your academic growth. Playing sports helps build confidence, improves teamwork skills, and helping them become more responsible. It was greatly missed last year, and I know it definitely took a toll on some of our student athletes. Hi, my name is Jacob Anderson. I'm the quarterback for the varsity football team. And what I'm looking forward to this season is hopefully getting a good group of guys out, getting work done doing our job and hopefully coming out with a chip or just a good win record out of the season. But the most important thing is just having fun really. And we had a game last Saturday. We came out with the win, but there's still a lot of work to be done. Uh, and I'm just glad we're able to play because last season we weren't able to. Uh, there's no contact because of COVID, so it's just it's good to be back to the basics. We are so excited to see our student athletes back on the field. Our athletes are gonna hit the home runs, score some sweet goals, and get lots of touchdowns. Three, two, one, three! We have lots of great athletes that come out of New Brunswick, and even some that come out of St. Stephen. 
One of our former St. Stephen athletes is playing in the NHL, and Ian got a chance to talk to him this summer. Let's go over with Ian. With hockey season just around the corner, our athletes wait patiently for the day they can finally get back onto the ice. The former St. Stephen hockey player Jake Allen stopped by his once hometown to donate boxes full of new equipment just before the skating begins. Jake spent nine years of his life going to school in St. Stephen and now plays goalie for the Montreal Canadiens in the NHL. I sat down with Jake and talked to him about his life as a professional hockey player as well as what steps he took to get to the career that he is in now. Let's go take a look. Hi Jake, thank you for, for sitting down with me today. Yeah. So, what are you doing here in St. Stephen? Yeah, well, St. Stephen is a place that I spent nine years of my life. You know, I grew up here, uh, you know, went to St. Stephen Elementary School and, uh, you know, paid my way to get to the NHL. And now I'm here to donate uh, some hockey equipment back to our local minor hockey here and um, try to make a, a difference in some kids' lives. So there are a lot of kids in St. Stephen, I know, especially down here today, who aspire to be um, maybe university level or above hockey players. What are some, some strategies or some, some things that they can work on to, to get to that level? Well, first, you just got to enjoy the game. You know, as a kid, it's all, that's what it's about is having a passion for it. It doesn't matter if it's hockey or, you know, academics, whatever. You have to enjoy what you're doing. And uh, then when you get to that point, and, you know, just putting your head down and making the most of your opportunities. You know, every day is an opportunity to get better. And, try to play your best every single night. It's not always going to be a smooth road. There's going to be a lot of bumps in the road, but uh, I think if you have a determination to to get to something that, uh, you know, you really can achieve it. Yeah, so totally talking about the bumps on the road. So I'm sure it was no easy path getting to the um, the NHL. What were some of the, the, the demons that you had to face on the road and how, how did you overcome them? Yeah, there's a lot of challenges, you know, obviously as a hockey player, there's, it's a global sport. So you're competing against, you know, kids and, and athletes from all over the world. So it's a, uh, it's a very broad landscape of people you're playing against. And there's only 600 players in the NHL. You know, it, it's a, it's a very, very tough thing to, uh, let alone play in the NHL, but play there for a long time. So I think it, every day is a challenge, you know, you, you can't take your foot off the gas and that's anything in life, you know, as soon as you take the foot off the gas, there's someone's uh, chasing your tail and wants your job. So uh, that's just the way I look at it. There's a lot of uh, highs and lows, but you know, if you can be as consistent as you can in anything, usually success results in it. Okay. So what is your favorite part about being a full-time hockey player? Uh, you know, it's, it's just, I have a passion for the game. It, it really doesn't feel like a job to me. You know, I, ultimately at the end of the day it is, you know, it's a profession, but at the same time, it's uh, you love the game, you love the sport, and you know we, what you put into the sport, you get out of it. You know, it's the way I look at it. So um, there's so much that I'm fortunate to have with my life that's from hockey. You know, I I owe everything to the game. You know, and the game really owes me nothing. You know, it's so that's the way I look at it. It's just I'm fortunate, I'm grateful, and you know, I'm lucky. Okay. And if, if, you were to, if you were to be able to talk to your, your high school self, what would some advice you would give yourself? Oh man, it's, uh, you know, be patient with everything, not just hockey. You know, you, you learn so many things as you go through your, you know, your teens and 20s and into your 30s. Um, you know, you think you got it figured out in high school sometimes, or you have an idea, but you really have no idea. I think it's, take all the advice you can from a lot of your peers and you know adults and and uh, respect their opinions and i think you know think things through a little bit more than you think you know uh, really try to understand as much as you can with everything that's going on around you and uh, back in my high school days i think it's you try to keep up with the joneses try to be on top of everything and you think you know everything but you really don't uh, and uh, 
I think the more you take in, the more you get out of everything. Okay, so on the topic of advice, um, who or who are a few of mentors that you've had, and what um, what did they tell you that kind of clicked and really really helped you in life? Uh, you know, obviously all your family, your parents, and like everyone's family, it, it's it, it's always someone that helps you achieve what you like, you know, your, what you want to do. They're always pushing you to be the best you can be. But I think you just got to try to take tidbits of information from everyone. You know, I think everyone has a different persona, has a different understanding of things. I think if you just try to take in all the information you possibly can from every angle, uh, it really sort of makes you understand things a lot easier. And that's something that I do now and I wish I did more of in high school. So I think uh, I think if you can do that, uh, you know, in your mid to late teens, uh, it'll just bring you easier success in your 20s. Okay. What was one of the biggest life lessons you've learned? Uh, life lessons, you know, a lot. I, I moved to a different country uh, when I was 20 years old. I moved to the St United States, you know, sort of had to fend for myself at 20. I think uh, just throwing myself to the wolves that way um, in a sense of, creating my own bank accounts, finding new drivers, like just, just a lot of things, finding housing. It just, it sort of prepared me for a lot of, you know, uncharted waters. And uh, I, I'm very grateful for it. It was very difficult at the time, you know, going from a 19 year old kid here in New Brunswick to, you know, still living with your parents and doing your laundry. And then you just say, all right, you got to go live on your own at 20 in the U.S. with nothing set up. You know, it, it just, it made me grateful down the road of how hard it was. Um, so I think all those tough times that you go through that you think are terrible at the time, there's always a reason and they'll be in your benefits in the end of the day. So what were some ways that Charlotte County has, has uh, helped you with your career? Um, you know, I, I was young when I lived here and my parents were here for, you know, almost 13 years. And I think it's just the connections that we still made and we still have to this day. You know, we have a lot of fr uh, friends down here that we still see every summer when I'm home. And uh, just the support system that I get from here plus Fredericton on top of it is, uh, is immense for me. You know, I, I feel it and, you know, I, it really helps. You know, it, even when you're at the NHL, you think, you know, the support might not be as you know, beneficial as it would have been when I was younger, but it still is to me. You know, I still feel it and I believe it. And um, they've always treated me like one of their own. And, uh, you know, that's why I always come back to try to, you know, say thanks for everything they did for me. Well, I'm sure, as you can see by the immaculate turnout today, everyone appreciates you. And I'm sure everyone will appreciate that gear and it will be used very, very well. So I appreciate your time, Jake. Yeah. Uh, my guest today has been Jake Allen one of the goalies for the Montreal Canadiens. It was awesome to be able to talk to Jake and hear some of his life stories. I'm sure it was no easy path to success for this hockey star. Hopefully you can take something away from this interview and apply it to your life. Thank you, Jake, for helping our community. Again, Jake Allen. It is important that we all play our part to support our community. One of the best ways to do that, if you're already spending money and buying items, why not give back to your community instead of going to cities and buying online? There's been an incredible amount of businesses opening up in even the last year. From Diner 81, an old school restaurant with incredible home style cooking, to Simply for Life, a new health food store. to Birch Corner, a home decor and gift shop. These businesses are bringing new life to our town. St. Croix Elmi Surplus and Musical Instruments is another great new store, as well as Perry's Boba Shop right beside it. Harper's Exotics and Pet Supply and Candy Creations by Kathy are two more downtown stores that have impacted our community. We had a chance to interview these two stores about their community response and how important it is to shop local. I'm here with Doug Harper to interview him about his business downtown and we're going to ask him what is your business, how did it start, and how do you do it? Okay, my business, my business is Harper's Exotics and Pet Supply. We, uh, 
We started off just with doing uh, animal shows on the weekend, actually. I was a licensed mechanic out to Moffitt's for about 10 years, and uh, I injured my back. And I was traveling with the animals that we had on weekends, doing shows and such. And then we we just seen it was a need that the community had. So I had to exit yeah. my career in mechanics. And uh, so, yeah, I started the uh, front pet store and the traveling animal business. And, yeah, that's how we, uh, we started that. Yeah, because you were one of the first people to do something like this with animals downtown. Yeah, there hasn't been a pet store in the community for over 20 years. Yeah. I can remember when I was little, there was one up where Scoops is now. Yeah. But yeah, that uh, we haven't had anything like this in, in a long time, and it's something the community needed because the closest place we got is like St. John, Fredericton, and yeah, stuff like drive. that to get quality pet supplies, yes, right? Yeah. So since you opened this business downtown, how, what has the community response been like? It's been good, really good. Like uh, we do a lot of community work, so the community has responded like back to us well. We uh, we have a good reliable 15 to 1600 clients that shop with us on a weekly basis for our, everything from our dog food toys just just your common stuff that you had to travel to get right but yeah the community response has been spectacular especially during the pandemic like we yeah. figured we would struggle but it's actually been better for our sales because people have to shop local with the border closure and stuff yeah. so. and that's what you've been doing for the community since the pandemic has started you've been providing local business for their pets that yes. you can't get outside yeah because a lot of people were scared to travel and we brought in a yeah. lot of a new stuff just to keep people from traveling to the city and such but yeah with the uh with the closure of the border and the virus around people yeah. are more scared to travel and it's been a very beneficial we've been doing home deliveries mm. everything to try to keep people from uh that may be scared to leave their homes as well right during this time to keep them uh, them happy as well as the borders start to open up now that COVID is starting to clear up a little bit what would you say to the community about shopping local downtown at these community businesses the way I say I, there is some businesses on the other side that that have been waiting for it to open up that need the support just as well but th they do have to remember especially small businesses like me I, I kind of didn't carry everything I did just when the COVID hit I brought in six what at least thirty to forty thousand dollars worth of new materials just to keep people that were scared to travel to the city so yeah. i hope when things open up that they realize that we did that and they, they continue to shop with us instead of saying oh i was up in the city today and while i was up there i stopped and i grabbed my cat litter or i stopped and i grabbed this yeah because over time that's going to become habit again for them and they got to understand that we were there for them so hopefully they'll stick with us and I'm not saying they weren't there for us during the pandemic they definitely were but we definitely went out of our way to try to help them out a little more and hopefully they, they stay loyal when the borders yeah. open up. I'm downtown here with Kathy from Candy Creations and I'm here to ask you what is your business how did it start and how's it going? Well, my business, as you just mentioned, is Candy Creations by Kathy. So we have a retail confectionery store, and we also sell Candy Creations, uh, customized gift baskets for any occasion. Uh, we started the business in October of 2019, just prior to COVID. And um, we've been pushing through. Uh, we, we've done okay through COVID making lots of changes and adjustments yeah. to uh, to keep pushing away. What has the community response been like since you opened the store? Uh, it's been really wet, really good. Uh, the community has really supported us. Yes. Um, we were very busy when we first opened, but again, you know, we're a new store. It's a, a new type of store that was, yeah. you know, brought to town. Yeah. And, um, but the community has been good through COVID and, and continues to be good. Mm -hmm. um, they support, I find our community is a very close-knit community yes, and yeah. they try as hard as they can to support local and we need to do that we all need to support local in order to keep you know our businesses open down here and and the services available uh, to everybody in Charlotte County and beyond. Two more established businesses that have opened in the past several years and quickly become local essentials are Spree Lifestyle Boutique and Studio and Something's Brewing Cafe. Spree recently opened a new store called Flourish Market on the lower level and we spoke to owner Kristen Cloney about this new development. I'm here with Kristen Cloney, the co-owner of Spree Life and Style. So Kristen, how did this business start? How did it take you to where you are today? And can you talk a little bit about this new development for our market? Absolutely. So we started basically, um, I had a switch, like a career switch. I was in a point where I had to make a decision about where I was going. And we saw a need in our community for um, a retail location. 
we, we had this hypothetical conversation of what if, wouldn't it be cool if, <laughs> and then the next thing you know, um, within several weeks, we had purchased a building um, and had booked a trip to go on a buying show with zero experience mm -hmm. under our belts in that uh, sense. But we got started and when we opened, we opened small and we slowly started to expand. Uh, we offered um, fashion and home decor that kind of expanded to also um, paint, which then led to a studio space. Although the studio has been really fun, we have actually had to pivot because of COVID. And because of that, have taken all of our classes and our, our studio activities and turned them into take home kits and package them okay, right. and have moved that all online. So we just kind of started looking at our buying habits, like our purchasing habits, habits for the store and a lot of our eco-friendly products, our area kind of kept expanding. And so we were standing upstairs in the store. We were trying to figure out our reopening plan and how we were going to include some of these new products. And we actually really wanted to include a refillery. So, yes. you know, just exactly. <laughs> um, some products where, you know, you can uh, buy, the, uh, buy the, the, the first bottle or bring your own bottle and then be able just to reuse that. Um, we made some changes in what we were using to wash our dishes and just little things that really didn't have a space in our store and so we got to talking and we said i think this is the time and so we made that choice to take the studio space because it had basically come to an end and then get into this whole new world of, of retail in a natural and organic products both um, that you're using in your everyday life but also you know from makeup to food to your, your cleaning products Thank you to all these local businesses for being crucial parts of our town and constantly raising the bar with incredible customer service and help for our community. We hope that this has encouraged all the people watching to get out and support these featured businesses as well as all the local places that make St. Stephen what it is. We all need to continue coming together during these hard times. Thank you for watching Spartan TV. And we will see you next month with another episode of what's happening at our school and connections with this wonderful community.